Hi everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project and today's project is to build myself a first flush diverter for the rainwater collection on my tiny house on wheels. So I've got some PVC cement here and I've got everything roughly assembled. I am going to have the rainwater come into the house and I'll explain all this how it works once I get it up and put together but basically the first flush system this is going to be standing up in a vertical position and the rainwater comes in from the house here flows into the pipe drops down into the long diversion chamber filling up the diversion chamber and all the dirt and gunk that was on the roof as the rain starts washing the roof the first flush will start filling up the pipe here and all the sediment and debris will fall into the bottom of this diversion chamber and as it fills up, eventually it'll reach the top, your roof will have been washed, and fresh water flows out to your cistern. And this is why this is called the first flush diverter. The first flush coming off your roof gets washed into the diverter, the diversion ch chamber or tank, and then you have relatively clean, pure water going into your cistern. Now this is offset from the downspout of the house for the reason that when the water comes from the downspout, if you had your diverter here, you'd have a lot of turbulence, which would then suck all the filth right back into your cistern. That would be pointless. So mine is offset from the downspout by a couple feet by the time I get it put together. And you'll see that in a few minutes here when I get to that point. Just make sure you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to have to disassemble everything and then start putting it together piece by piece. I had it all put together here so you could see what I was doing. And now it's time to take it apart and reassemble it. There were basically, this is some very simple and basic plumbing pieces. Oh, there's a sticker I'm going to have to take off. Stupid place for a sticker, but I guess I'll have to take that off. Wait, does that? Yeah, that goes inside. Alright, I'll have to do some cleaning. So uh, before I continue, I am going to clean off any things that are in the way, like these stickers, make sure there's nothing going to interfere with the pieces being able to be glued together. But I'll show you what I've got uh, to make up this system. Just in case you want to copy the same system, I'll show you everything I have. To make the first flush diverter and this is it this is the complete first flush diverter you've got a two foot piece of four inch PVC pipe now my roof is only 240 square feet if yours is larger then you will want a larger diversion pipe there is a website which I showed the other day uh, I think I'm gonna link to it on what on the video if I remember and if I forget please remind me but there's a website that shows you how to calculate the amount of gallons you need based on your roof size. And then I've got, very simple, a end cap and a coupling for the end cap, for the, the clean out cap here. Okay. I've got some downspout adapters to go to the PVC pipe. I've got a T adapter for the water to flow through then. And four couplings and that's all that's required to make this first flush diverter so I'm gonna go ahead and clean all these parts up and I'll be back in a minute alright so I've wiped everything down and washed it all you should use alcohol but I used a towel with water and just scrubbed it thoroughly um, they suggest using alcohol but I've never had troubles especially since this is not a uh, sensitive item if there was a tiny drip actually a tiny drip is going to be um, beneficial later on in the bottom of the clean out cap but that's a project for another day I'm gonna set it up later now what I've got is a coupling for the bottom and I'll put on the clean out cap right now so just test fitting for for starters here All right. it's a very tight fit so this is gonna be awkward I, uh, you're supposed to put PVC cement on the inside of this ring and the outside of this piece and 
Din put them together. Okay, the cement is closed. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to open that up with a wrench. I would strongly advise using this stuff outside. It is some pretty powerful, bad smelling stuff. And not very good for you. I try to get the excess off a little bit. Swish it around in there a little bit. Make sure you get a good even coating. Get some more on. Swish it around here. Okay. And you wait a couple seconds. Uh, yeah, do not breathe. Use between 40 degrees, degrees and 110 degrees. Second coating to the pipe. Yeah, it says assemble stuff quickly. This stuff is... Do not wait a second, it says quickly, I forgot. All right, on and a little twist. Okay, you push on and give it a little twist. And boy, that stuff sets up fast and hard. So, sets up right now. So that's done. Now I'm going to put the clean out connector on. So the same deal. I'm pre testing, pre fitting everything first, of course. There's a stupid knob on there. You might have to cut that knob off. I don't know why they do that. That's very much in the way. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut that knob off. I'll be back. All right, same issue here. Put some cement inside. Put some cement outside. Oh, this stuff is powerful smelling, terrible smelling. And push and give it a little turn. And generally, if you did a good job, you should see a little bit of goo in the edges. I am not a plumber, I'm just telling you from my experience. I'm going to leave that cap off so the gases can escape. Now, this thing, this sticker was giving me trouble. It's still giving me trouble. That's coming off a little bit or no. That gummy stuff from the sticker wasn't coming off. So I've been soaking it. Still giving me trouble. I don't know how plumbers deal with this. I'm sure they got something to clean it with. I'll leave that soaking for a minute. It's getting better. All right, now, I need a coupling for the top, and then that's going to go in. in. And, of course, I'm going to have to cut off the lip on there, too. I don't know why they do that, but I'm going to put a coupling on the top. Make sure there's no filth on there. You got a lot of cat hair from it was sitting in the house. Static electricity because it's winter. All right, hit the pipe first. They say. Hit the coupling next. Leave no surface uncoated. They say. Hit the pipe again. Press and turn. A little bit of a turn. And that's going to be fitted on very nice. Alright, I'm going to finish scraping that off before we go any further. I figure I might show you this. In the end, to speed this up, to get the goo off, because I don't have any goo remover, I'm just using the blade 
to scrape it. And then keep the blade clean. Two sweeps, clean the blade. It's doing a job for me. Cause I gotta get this job done. And to get the tabs off, oops, I got three more tabs. Ah, I didn't see them. To get the tabs off, what I did is I put some rubber cement on them to soften them. Figured I might as well show you what I'm doing. That softens that, those tabs, and then I can cut them off. And I realized as I was cutting them, these are manufacturer's logos and uh, identification stamps and stuff. And the reason they're there is because that's the outside of the pipe. I'm using this for a non-standard purpose. So that explains why those are there. Once I get those three tabs off, I'm ready to go. I'm just cutting it with a carpet knife. Soften it with the rubber cement and carefully cut it off with a carpet knife. Okay, now the next is the T. It's going to go into this piece. Okay, so I've got the screw cleaner cap here, screw in cleaner cap. This is the bottom, it's all finished. Now I'm going to glue the T fitting on. Now I'm wiggling this a bit because it's important to have a good seal because this T fitting doesn't fit tightly in here. It's getting heavy now. Okay, now the next thing is the other couplers here. Okay, and then the rain downspout adapters. Now there's nothing up to this point sensitive where which way is up or which way is down. So the outside of this, now I'm going to want to put extra glue in here I think because I've got to fill that gap. This is an issue with this, I've got to fill that that gap fully because these are two different types of pipe I'm using here and so they don't mesh up perfectly well that was better okay yeah, okay. Now I see that's going to seal nice. Oh yeah, that's stuck on. And there's a good seal of glue all the way around. 
That's never going to leak. Very good. Now I'll do the last piece. Same issue. Nice, good, thick coating all the way around. Don't want that ever leaking. Oh, that's vile. I just breathed some in. You do not want to be breathing that stuff. Ooh. Terrible. Makes me lightheaded right now. Okay. Press, turn. Good seal of glue. That'll never leak. Now, this part is important. Which way is up right and which way is not. This is the, the sensitive part of the whole project right here. Because I had these up like this before. Last night I, was, I had these in here like this. And uh, that's the way I was going to do it. And I realized I don't want it like that. I want the water to come and drop in and not have to rise back up to hit this certain point again. I need these down like this so the water flows in, drops down, and when it comes up to the bottom level of the pipe, it can flow back out through the downspout leaving this. So this is sensitive here. Now these are wobbly, so I've, again, I've got to be really extra, um, put on some extra glue. Alright, so we'll do this next. Again, I've got to get a good generous coating of glue because that's what's going to make all the difference on this because these are really sloppy pieces. Sloppy fit, I mean. And then get it up on the inside lip of that pipe too. Now, position it properly. And once you got it in, there's not going to be any more adjusting. But once it starts to tighten, you're done. So get that straight how you want it. And nice good lip of glue. Should be good to go. Okay, that one was good. Line it up. Little wiggle. It's going to seal well. Okay, now, the downspout, or now the, uh, the first flush diverter is done. Now I'm just going to let these parts cure. And the next process will just simply be mounting this up onto the wall of the tiny house on wheels. So there is how you make a first flush diverter. 
Now, the next step is just simply going to be putting in the, the downspout pipes. I have to have uh, a flex pipe because I could not find a, um, a 90 degree angle. I don't know if they exist or they don't exist or what, but what I want is to come off the side of the house and come into here. So I'm going to have to come from the top and come in like this. Now I'm going to have a little bit of space, like I said, between the house and this so that there's no turbulence inside the first flush diverter when the rain starts to fill that up. So I'm going to let that cure now and we'll be back in a while.